I welcome you back again for this uh, lesson. Mm, at this point, uh, we are going to start our lesson for the day. I remember yesterday when we met here, uh, we looked at some of the key concepts on machines when we had started looking at machines. Uh, I think before we run the correction of the exercise that I gave yesterday, I would like to remind us of the following things, key points that we looked at. One, we talked of the word machines. And we said a machine is a device that simplifies man's work, that makes man's work easier. That is what we said a machine is. We also went ahead and we looked at the types of the machines with their examples, and we gave the explanation of each type of machine that we talked about. Now, uh, we went ahead and we looked at uh, what we call the classes of machines, but before I give you a hint or a revision on those classes of machines that we looked at, I would like us to go through the correction of the exercise that I gave you yesterday which I understand that each of you did it and you passed it very well. But before we go into what we are going to learn today, let us first have correction on those numbers that I left you with yesterday. Yesterday, uh, our exercise, question number one was saying, name any three examples of machines. I remember when we were talking about the machines, the examples of machines that I gave, one, we talked about uh, machines like a pair of scissors. We talked about uh, a tractor. We talked about a hoe that is used for digging. Uh, with, uh, there are also other machines like the, the knives and uh, other examples. There are very many examples of machines, but since the question was asking us, to have to mention three examples of machines. I believe I have given more than three examples. Uh, the next thing that I would like to emphasize here when we are answering the questions, make sure you stick on what the question is asking you. When the question is saying, name three examples, make sure you name three, even if you know more than three, but make sure you name those three, because that is what the question is limiting you to give. Two, we must read the question and get the clear instructions on one the question, on what the question is, what the question is especially requiring us to give as an answer. Uh, question number two was saying, why is a car, why is a car grouped under complex machines? as a type of machines. We looked at complex machines as a, one of the types of machines that we have. Why is a car grouped under complex machines? Uh, the answer to that question is because a car is made up of many parts. A car is made up of many parts. We said the complex machines are machines that are made up of many parts. Therefore, a car is grouped under complex machines because it is made up of many parts. Our question number three was inquiring us to, to draw a, a machine that is used to cut our fingernails short when we are at home. I believe in different places we use different, uh, we may have different types of machines and I know not all of you have drawn one type because we have the nail clippers that are used to cut the fingernails. Yes, they are machines. Someone who has drawn that, you're correct. Also, a person who has drawn the common one that is commonly used in urban areas and also in villages, that is a razor blade. That person also is very correct. Those are the machines that are used to cut the fingernails short. Get this clear. If the question comes and say, when it is saying, what is the use of a razor blade 
in promoting personal hygiene. Please, when you're writing this answer, most of the pupils, they write this answer as a razor blade is used to cut the fingers, fingernails. Please, it is not used to cut the fingernails. When you say it is used to cut the fingernails, it means you're cutting the fingernails right from where they develop from, the whole of the fingernail. That's why we include the word short. We cut the fingernails short. We don't cut the fingernails, but we cut them short. We just reduce their size to remove that hiding place for germs. Our next question, that was question number four, was requiring us to define the term machine. What is a machine? As we said, a machine is a device that simplifies man's work. Or another person can say, a machine is a tool that eases man's work. Those are the two definitions that we can give on that number four. Number five, mention two examples of simple machines. Two examples of simple machines. We have a hoe. We can also talk about a panga. We can talk about a knife. You can talk about a razor blade. Those are examples of simple machines. I have mentioned those ones because they are the ones that we commonly use at home. They are the commonly used simple machines at home. So those are the examples of simple machines. Question number six was saying, how are machines useful to a school cook? How are machines useful to a school cook? This, questions, this question requires you to think. Think about a school cook. What, do, what, what is this that is special with a school cook? What does a school cook require? One, we know that a school cook requires a knife to cut some onions when he's there preparing food in the kitchen. And we said a knife is an example of a machine. A school cook requires an axe, an axe that is used for splitting firewood. And that one also is an example of a machine. Now the question is saying, how are machines useful to a school cook? You can say a machine is used by a school cook to split firewood, or you can say an axe is used by a school cook to split firewood, a knife is used by a school cook to peel, uh, to peel bananas, to cut the onions, to cut the tomatoes, and others. That was, those are some of the responses that were required in number six. Number seven, apart from digging, give any other use of a hoe, apart from digging. A hoe is used for weeding. That's another use of a hoe. We can use a hoe for weeding. A hoe can also be used to dig, to dig pits for transplanting, to dig holes for trans where seedlings can be transplanted. So those are some of the uses of a hoe as a machine. Number eight, name three classes of levers. This one's I believe everyone passed it. The classes of levers, we have first class levers, then we have second class levers, then we have third class levers. There are only three classes of levers, please. We don't have the 10 class levers, okay? There are only three. First class, second class levers, then we have the third class levers. Those are the classes of levers. Number nine, the second last question was saying, state two advantages of using machines. State two advantages of using machines. Here we looked at the advantages of using machines when we asked ourselves a question yesterday. And we said, how do machines simplify work? We said, machines increases on the speed of doing work. That is an advantage of using a machine. Machines increases on the speed of doing work. Secondly, we can also say, machines changes the direction of force. They change the direction of effort that is used in doing work. Then lastly, we said machines, machines also uh, makes doing work easy. They make doing work, they make the, the rate of doing work, the, the, the energy that is doing, 
used to do work becomes less when you're using a machine. So less energy is used when you're using a machine to do work. Number 10, name the device that converts electric energy into mechanical energy. The answer for that question is supposed to be a motor. A motor, the spelling of the word motor is M-O-T-O-R. A motor is a device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. Uh, motors are always used by this, the carpenters during that machine where they, they use for smoothening the timber. That, that machine is a motor. It is connected to electricity. And from electricity, when, when electricity, when it is switched on, it changes that electric current. It changes electric energy to mechanical energy. That helps to smoothen the timbers. Thank you very much for those ones who passed all the numbers. I believe those who are there. Now, uh, today, we would like to go back a little and we look at where we stopped yesterday, that was under the classes of simple machines. Classes of simple machines, or we talk about the classes of, uh, the groups of simple machines. I remember here saying that we have basically six classes of simple machines. There are six classes of simple machines. One of the first class of the simple machines that we talked about was the levers. Levers are the first class of simple machines. The second class we can talk about, we talk about the pulleys, we talked about the wedges, we talked about the wheel and axle, we talked about the screws, then the other class. Now, today we won't look at mainly one of the class. We won't understand one class, and that is the first class that we mentioned. Those are levers. When you talk about the word lever, I remember, I know if I was just to mention this word lever, someone would easily think about the lever of chicken, eh? because you always eat that lever. Eh? Uh, someone would easily think about that lever. But the lever that we talk about in machines is different from that. The lever we are looking at today is L-E-V-E-R. That is the lever. We want to understand what is a lever? What do you understand by the word lever when you talk about machines? What is a lever? A lever is simply a stiff rod. A lever is a stiff rod that turns on a fixed point. I repeat this. A lever is a stiff rod that turns on a fixed point on a fixed point. Now, when we talk about a fixed point of a lever, we are going to look at the parts of a lever. We are going to identify eventually what is that fixed point that we are talking about of a lever. Where is that fixed point? Where, where does that fixed point, where can we find that fixed point on a lever? Since we are saying a lever is a stiff rod that turns on a fixed point, we would like to look at the parts of a lever to get to understand the lever very well. What are some of the parts that make up the lever? Here we are looking at the parts of a lever. It is a simple drawing that I have made here that describes a lever. Also, someone can use a pair of scissors to name these parts of the liver. A pair of scissors, we can use it to name these parts of the liver. But before we go to that, let us have a look at these parts of the liver. Looking at the parts of the liver here, a liver is made up of some parts that we are going to look at. One of the parts that make up the liver is what we call the lord, the lord. The lord. When talking, I'm not, uh, this Lord here, Lord, L-O-A-D, not the other Lord uh, of Lord's Prayer. We are talking about this Lord. Another word to mean uh, the Lord, it is the body or the weight of something, okay? That is what we mean by the Lord. 
It is one of the parts that make up the liver, the Lord. Apart from the Lord, we have another part that makes up the liver. And that part is what we call the pivot. We have the part that is called the pivot that is represented by letter P. Pivot. Pivot. P-I-V-O-T. Pivot. Someone can call it a pivot, or another person can also call it fulcrum. Fulcrum. Fulcrum, F-U-L-C-U-C-R-U-M. Fulcrum. That's the word fulcrum. So this part is called a pivot or fulcrum. Therefore, pivot is represented by letter P, and fulcrum, if the person is using the word fulcrum, that, the word fulcrum is represented by F, letter F, capital F. It is represented by capital F. Now, why am I trying to emphasize some of these abbreviations that we use to represent the parts of a machine? Very soon we shall come to the calculation on machines. And we, might not be, we shall not be in position to write all this, the fulcrum, the pivot. But we shall be using some of these representations. We shall be using letter P to mean pivot. And we shall be using letter F to mean fulcrum. We shall be using letter L to mean Lord. Lord. Now, I have said um, I, these levers are made up of parts. And the first part that I talk about is the Lord. Then the other part I talked about is the pivot or fulcrum. Then the other part that makes up a lever is also called the effort. Effort is represented by letter E, the first E that we see here. Effort, we are coming soon to look at what, is, what, what do this means, the effort, the load, the pivot or fulcrum. Then the other parts that make up a lever, we also have these parts that are called the load arm. The load arm. We have the load and the load arm. Lord, Lord Arm. Now, Lord is represented by letter L. Lord Arm is represented by L, A. When you see those two letters, L, A, when you're talking about machines, those letters represent the Lord Arm. I said I'm emphasizing this because time will come when we shall be using these abbreviations here. We shall be using these letters to work out to do the calculation, to solve some of the word problems, the problems that have been given to us to work out. We have the Lord arm. Now, when we talk about the Lord arm, the Lord arm is the distance from the Lord to the pivot. The distance from the Lord to the pivot. This one here, this length here, the length that runs from the pivot here to here is what we call the Lord arm. Now, we said a human arm is an example of a liver. I won't use this. This is my arm. This one is the Lord. I believe all of us are saying this. This is the Lord here. Now, from here, the point at which my arm moves freely. Listen, this arm of mine cannot move from here. When here is tied, it cannot bend from here, okay? This one is a stiff rod. This one is a stiff rod. So this part here, my arm will move freely from here. It will turn from here. This is the Lord. This one here, where my arm turns, is what we call the pivot or fulcrum, okay? Pivot or fulcrum. This is the fulcrum. This one here is the Lord. The distance between the Lord and the fulcrum here this part here is what we are calling the Lord arm, the Lord arm. This is the Lord arm. Now, if this is the fulcrum, I will have the, the effort here. This is where the energy is applied for me to lift this load from here. Now, I've said this is the load. This one here, from here up to here, 
From here to the fulcrum is what we call the Lord arm. This turning point is the fulcrum. Then from the fulcrum here, where my hand stands, up to the effort here, the distance from here up to this point is what we call the effort, the effort arm. This one here is the effort arm. Therefore, the effort arm is the distance between the effort and the pivot. The distance between the effort and the pivot. That is what we call the effort arm. While the load arm is the distance between the load and the pivot or the fulcrum. I believe someone has got that right. Now, looking at some of this, I have explained much of this. Maybe to explain the term effort. Effort is simply the energy that you need to overcome the Lord. The energy, this one here, if this is the stone, this is my Lord, the stone. This stone is very heavy. The energy that I need to lift this stone up is what we call the effort, okay? The energy that I require to lift up this stone here is what we call the effort, and that energy should be applied from here. Then we have what we call the Lord. The Lord, that one is the weight or the body that you need to lift. For example, if you are lifting a sack of portion at home, okay? Mommy has bought some portion, maybe 15 kilograms or 10 kilograms. That one becomes, that portion becomes the Lord. And the energy that you require to lift up that portion is what we call the effort. I, got, I believe someone has got me there well. So I have explained this, but I would like to emphasize something here. I said, the point at which a machine turns, at which a lever turns, is called the pivot or fulcrum. Someone can say pivot, someone can say fulcrum. Those are some of the parts of the liver, parts of the liver. Now, on those parts of the liver, I have given out some of the explanation here that I have given to you already. Looking at, uh, from the parts of the liver, let's go ahead. Now that we have known that a liver is a stiff rod, it is a stiff rod that turns on a fixed point. A stiff rod that turns on a fixed point. That is what we call the liver. We would like to look at examples, examples of livers. What are some of the examples of livers? What are some of those examples of those machines that turn on a fixed point? One of those machines that turn on a fixed point is what we call a CISO that these young children, they used to balance themselves, okay? That is what we call a CISO. It is an example of a liver. Then another example of a liver that you can look at is a pair of scissor, a pair of scissor. I have some diagram here. It is very unfortunate that I have not carried my pair of scissor today, but I have a diagram here. Now, on this pair of scissor, when you hold it from here, when you hold it from here, it will turn. This one here is what we call the fulcrum, okay? Or the pivot. That point at which it turns, this one here is the pivot. When you're shaking this, this pair of scissors, this blade here, these blades, they will not move away. Otherwise, they will just rotate on this point here. And that point is what we call the pivot or the fulcrum. That is what uh, an example of uh, levers. Apart from a pair of scissors, we also have what we call the pair of pliers. Pair of pliers. I know someone could be asking, what is a plier? What are the things teacher is calling the pair of pliers? A machine that is called a, a plier is mainly used by electricians. These people who repair, and uh, this, uh, the mechanics, electricians and the mechanics. It is used for cutting, cutting some of the wires. Mainly it has, uh, it looks like a, a pair of scissors, but for it, it does not have this. The handle, the handle, most of the handles of this pair of pliers, they, are, they have some kind of rubber on them that are colored either yellow, red, green, depending. 
on the type of the rubber they are put there, but it is used for cutting the wires, small wires. That is what we are calling a pair of pliers. Then we have the human arm, your arm. This is what we call the human arm, from here up to here. That is the human arm. It is an example of the liver. We are calling it, and uh, we are grouping it under levers because it turns on a fixed point. This is the fixed point, your elbow. Your elbow acts as the pivot, where your hand turns, the arm turns. That's why it is grouped under levers. Now, these levers, please, I want us to get to know this very well. We looked at classes of simple machines, and we are talking about one class, those are levers, especially levers. Now, when we also talk about levers, levers are also divided, they are also classified. What am I trying to mean here? Levers also have their classes. So what we are going to look at right now is what we call the classes of levers. Get this very well. We have classes of simple machines, then we have classes of levers. These are two different things. Don't mix them. Classes of simple machines, classes of levers. Classes of simple machines, we have levers, we have screws, we have wheel and axle, we have inclined planes, or the slopes, and many others. Classes of levers, there are only three classes of levers. When we talk about classes of levers, there are only three. And these three classes of levers mainly include, one, we have what we call first class levers fast class levers. We have what we call fast class levers. Then the second class of levers that we have is called second class levers. Then the third one also takes that name, the third class levers. Those are three classes of levers that we have. I repeat this. We have only three classes of levers, first class levers, second class levers, then the third class levers. We have six classes of simple machines. Six classes, there are six classes of simple machines, while there are only three classes of levers. Now, that was what I had prepared for us today, to talk about mainly one group of simple machines, and that was levers, the class that is called the levers. Uh, I would not like to take you so much in a high speed on these classes of simple machines, because you have to understand them very well before we go to something else. On these classes, uh, classes of levers, when I come in for the next lesson, we shall be looking at especially the first class levers. We want to understand why are these ones called first class levers. Why are they grouped under first class levers? That is what we shall need, especially to understand. Why are these ones called first class levers? Why are these ones called second class levers? And why are the other ones called third class levers? So when we come back for the next lesson, we shall be looking at especially classes of levers, and that is first class levers. Now, to sum up what we have been learning, Today, uh, I started. Uh, we started this lesson by having looking uh, looking at one of the groups of simple machines, and those are levers. And we said a lever is a stiff rod. A lever is a stiff rod. It is a stiff rod that turns on a fix on a fixed point. A lever is a stiff rod that turns on a fixed point. I would like us to have a look at application of effort. What is the direction of effort? Direction of eff effort when you're using a, a pair of scissors. How, 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 does, how do you apply energy? What is the direction of energy? That one you're going to show me on our exercise here. How does the effort move, okay? I have said here, when you're applying the effort here, 
for you to lift this, you have to press this one downward so that the load can go up. What if you want to cut something using a pair of scissors? How do you apply? What is the direction of the effort when you're using a pair of scissors? Uh, back to our question here, exercise. For the lesson, exercise number one, we are saying name two parts that make up a lever. I describe these parts very well. The two parts that make up a lever. Question number two, what name is given to the turning point of a lever? What name is given to the turning point of a lever? Number three, mention three classes of levers. Mention three classes of levers. I think this one is very simple. Then number four, using an arrow. Using an arrow on a lever below. Using an arrow on the lever below. Show the direction of force applied. Force applied is the same as the effort. Okay? Now, I would like to emphasize something here. When you are using the arrow, that. If they have said using letter X, just put this arrow after pointing that part that they have, uh, uh, they have asked you to point, just point it with the arrow and put your letter X. This one shows that this is the point where the fulcrum or the pivot is formed, okay? Now, this one here is used to point on a certain part that if they have told you that using an arrow, show the position of the fulcrum. Using an arrow, show the position of the load. We use this arrow here without this sharp, without this sharp end. However, on machines, when the question comes in and it is asking you to show the direction of the force, the direction of the energy, the direction of the effort that is applied that is when we can use this type of arrows. We use this type of arrows to show movement. I believe we are getting that. We use these sharp arrows to show movement. The same way I used it here. When you look at this arrow here, this arrow has a sharp point. This sharp point is showing you that this one here, the effort, the direction of the effort, the effort is moving downwards. The effort is moving downwards. We use it only when you are showing the direction of the effort, these sharp arrows. But when you are locating the part on the body of a machine, of, on any organism, we use this one without the, without the arrow. Uh, question number five on this side is telling us, Differentiate, differentiate between the load and the effort. In simple, the question is asking us, what is the difference between the load and the effort? Number six, what is a lever? What is a lever? That is the first, the first statement that we opened up our lesson with, this new lesson here. Then number seven is saying, why is a pair of scissors, why is a pair of scissors classified as a lever. Why is a pair of scissors classified as a lever? Number eight, using an arrow with the letter P. That one brings us back to this one now. Using an arrow with the letter P. Show the position of the fulcrum on the scissor below. Using an arrow with the letter P. Show the position of the fulcrum on the Scissor here, the portion of the fulcrum. The number nine, how are levers? How are levers useful in our daily life? How are levers useful in our daily life? When we talk about a pair of scissors, talk about a pair of pliers, talk about a scissor, how are they useful in our daily life? Then lastly, explain the following terms. The first one is the effort arm. Then the, the other one is the Lord arm. I believe this was the, the best exercise of all lessons, and everyone will enjoy doing it. Thank you very much. Be blessed. Till we meet again.